Well, indeed, that is our guest this morning. As introduced, the GMD, that's the Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Nigeria's oil company, is our guest this morning. Mr. Melekiari, welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much and good morning. I do feel like a very lucky fisherman this morning, even though I had absolutely nothing to <laughs> do with catching this fish. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not every day you host the NNPC GMD in your studios. Welcome to Sunrise Daily once again. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Well, this morning, I see the dailies already knew that you might be coming. Uh, some of the stories on the front pages this morning uh, make reference to some of the issues which we hope to be discussing. Uh, that particular report talked about the launch of Operation White, the second phase of Operation White. In the first phase, we had seen the closure of the borders. That's correct? That's correct. Uh, this time around, are we going to be seeing another closure of the borders? Absolutely not. The Operation White was actually happened during the border closure. So Operation White did not close the border. Okay. Thank you. Well, it happened during the border closure. Yes. But one of the benefits that we saw was that yes. smuggling of our products was reduced. reduced. That... Absolutely. Okay. Yes, so, so this time around, it's not going to... The border is not closed. Yes. We're still going to carry forward the Operation White uh, activities to curtail cross-border smuggling. The, that story is very important because if you look at what we have on the front page of the punch this morning, they have this border corruption, security agents, smugglers, wasn't subsidy crisis, flout Buhari's order. That's the front page of the punch this morning. I don't know if you've seen it at all. Yes, of course I did. Uh, obviously, flouting the order may not be correct. Uh, I think that's not the uh, proper way of putting it uh, because uh, smugglers are there to flout anyone's order. So obviously it's not about others, it's about the realities that are around us. Uh, first, let me just step back uh, to see what exactly are we dealing with. Uh, we know for sure that our petroleum or PMS consumption or petrol consumption in this country is not up to 60 million liters. We are very sure it is not up to that number. But we supply up to 60 million liters for very obvious reasons. Any time you do short of that, you see the scarcity on our streets. And what we call consumption today in the country is actually evacuation from fuel depots. That means we evacuate up to 60 million liters average in a month out of, um, that's on daily basis now, uh, most average comes around 60 million liters. So we always plan with 60 million liters because we know that any time we do below that number, we have a crisis. And the difference is uh, the realities around us. First, we agree also that there are sharp practices uh, which we are trying to contain. But more importantly, you have what is uh, called the organized cross-border smuggling of petroleum, which is associated with the pricing of petroleum itself. Uh, as we are aware, uh, today we are paying 162 naira to the liter. I'm sure many people buy AGO in the market today. And uh, I just saw as I was coming AGO to... AGO is diesel. It's diesel, yes. Uh, diesel is selling at 280 naira to the, to the liter. So nowhere in the world, diesel sells uh, cheaper than, uh, more expensive than... Than PMS. That means that the price of petrol anywhere in the world, assuming you're going to sell it at the market, you're going to sell it at be above that price that you have seen in, in the market. So that is number one uh, challenge that we have. The second challenge is that you are bothered with countries that have no choice. Landlocked countries, uh, yes, the number of vehicles that they have is quite lower than what we have, but the reality today is that you have to transport petroleum into this country by road. In some cases, uh, by pipeline. Very marginal case, uh, only in Ghana that goes off north into the north of the country where petroleum is transported to other countries. Otherwise, all the movement of petroleum in, a, in, a, in the West African sub region and beyond this is by trucks. So, these countries have no choice, my sister. Uh, first, uh, the issue of foreign exchange. Uh, many of them cannot raise such high foreign exchange to meet their balance of payment requirements. Uh, because uh, petroleum is expensive now, crude oil sales are about $75 to the barrel, and then we're going to need enormous amount of foreign exchange to support this. So that's another complication that we have. And the arbitrage that is real uh, helps uh, grow this uh, issue around smuggling. And of course, Mr. President, well, that's, I'm sure that's why they are coming out plotting this order. Mr. President has directed that we do everything possible to make sure that we pull down this volume, that we cannot explain that cross-border smuggling is taking place as a reason for having problem with this. So tell us then, when the borders were shut and, you know, what was, what was Nigeria consuming? Yeah, the evacuation was around 52 million liters per day to 53 million liters per day. So and during million, the COVID-19, when, yeah. when absolutely was, that was no longer an issue of border closure it's because yeah. the markets were not there, it came down to about 42 million liters per day. That means that... Uh, 
uh, if everything works well and consumption is limited to our country, we are dealing with somewhere around 42 uh, million liters of our consumption. Because during the COVID-19, mind you, if you don't forget, uh, if we, Nigerians do, can remember, uh, during the COVID-19, you know, there was lockdown for some time, but there was no absolute lockdown in this country. So municipal movements as, were still going on despite all the restrictions that we have. And there was a period of about two weeks when, you know, absolute movement were curtailed. But thereafter, you know, it wasn't curtailed. So when you look at it and the cross border, because many of these countries were actually so, more successful than us in shutting down their countries uh, during that, that period. And the end result is that there was no longer any need for the cross border uh, smuggling because the, the customers will not have buyers. And during that period, we saw the consumption go down, or consumption now, or the evacuation from the depots around 42 million liters per day. And what's this the, kind of reflects what the realities could be. What's the landing price of petrol today? Today, uh, landing, maybe I, what I can remember, so that I don't give you the wrong number, so what I can remember, I checked the numbers two days ago. Uh, what would we sell if we are at the fuel station today and recover our cost fully? It's around 256 naira to the liter. If you were to recover your cost fully, but yeah, when you uh, land at the at the uh, borders at the ports, rather yeah. the landing yeah, yeah, cost be, that would be lower than that okay. because there are other costs that are associated with transporting the fuel from the port, port into the fuel stations. Mm. That I can't remember the numbers. There was a time when the NNPC did say there was no longer subsidy being paid. In fact, that Nigeria was fully deregulated. We are we're in a fully deregulated market. What went wrong? Yes. Uh, March, precisely March, last, last, late March uh, 2020, uh, there is a decision of government for us to deregulate the price of petroleum. We saw an opportunity because the market uh, price of petroleum went down substantially. It was far lower than the 145 naira to the liter that we were selling at that time. Actually, we brought down the price to 125 naira to the liter because that was the realities at that time that we could sell uh, at below the 145 and still recover our cost fully, a little more, even more than our cost at that time. So we saw that as an opportunity for us to walk out of the, the regulated environment. Nobody sold anything. Uh, people clapped for us that uh, all is well. We are now selling petroleum below market at market price. Of course, uh, over time, uh, COVID-19's effects started waning down. And, and ultimately, uh, we ended up with uh, petroleum prices hitting the one above the 145 around September last year. And that was the beginning of our conversation with uh, organized labor and civil society organiza organizations and the issue around, oh, you are now pulling out subsidy fully, you can't do this, and that engagement has started. By November, the prices have gone to around 162 naira to the litre when, if you are to sell at market in the fall station. So those engagements and all the crises that followed it, I'm sure you recall the answers and all that, they are all associated, they are all connected. And ultimately, engagement with organized labor started. And up to the end of February, we were not able to close that engagement. February this year, we weren't able to close those engagement with organized labor so that we can have a fully deregulated market environment. So the, the challenges are that um, realities that we can afford it. Uh, but also, the second reality is that if you don't do something smart, that you could end up throwing up prices at Nigerians that are well above uh, what they should pay for. And that's the concern of Mr. President to make sure that, look, contain two things, contain the volume, and also make sure that the pricing is appropriate even when you, when you have to move into that direction. And this is the engagement that are going on. We haven't closed it. It will not be this month. It will probably not be next month also. And, and, and of course, there are engagements that are going on. But ultimately, the end result is that uh, uh, at one point in time, not today uh, probably, but uh, the engagement is aimed at making sure that uh, at least there is a reasonable level of uh, pricing that we can do that will recover the cost. What we are doing today is... Uh, responsible for many other things, and uh, that means you are taking out cash for what you have done, what should have done for other things to pay for uh, the cost of petroleum. Well, we had the former Minister of Finance talk, to, talk about an under-recovery in NNPC. Mm. Is that still, still the situation? Yes, under-recovery means uh, NNPC goes to the market, buys petroleum, brings into this country, we should have sold it at 256 naira to the litre, we sell it in the market at 162 naira to the litre. So you are not able to recover your full cost. They are the same thing. Under recovery and subsidies are one and the same word. That's correct? Not exactly. When you say subsidy, you spend and you are paid back. That's the difference. So what so is So in under recovery, happening? because I have the resources in my hands, I buy it, I'm not able to recover, and nobody is paying NMPC for, for the subsidy. It's simply our cost of operation. We deduct that cost before we make available what's the balance of the resources in our hands. So that's the difference. Okay, so as but what, you, are, you are literally as paying for uh, the difference between the market price and what you are selling. 
but it's the issue of difference of timing and then the channel of that payment. So as a result, NNPC is subsidizing the Nigerian market, but it's not being able to recover the, the monies that it is Absolutely. paying as subsidies to the Nigerian market back from the federal government. Is that correct? Yes, what it means is that NNPC is bringing in product, selling that below market. We have resources of the state. We sell crude oil on behalf of the federation. Uh, we are supposed to recover the whole value of that crude oil paid into the federation account. Because our balance sheet cannot carry those uh, losses, you know, we, we are now in a way, we are owing the federation. Yes, we have your resources with you. We brought product and salt on, on your behalf, but we're not able to recover the full cost. Therefore, put it on your records that we are not able to rec return it. That's why it is called under recovery. Okay. Yeah. Now, as a result of this, you have said that the NNPC might not be able to remit much into the federation account come June or July. Is that correct? Yes, because you cannot have the absolute number. There's an expectation in the, in the Appropriation Act for NMPC to deliver at least 120 billion naira every month to the Federation account. And mind you, uh, the, there's a misunderstanding around our operations uh, to our country. I think it's a very good opportunity to explain this. When you see oil and gas, you have to produce oil, you have to produce gas. Once you do these two, uh, you must pay taxes, you must pay uh, royalties. And then this tax and royalty will not happen until you have a production that is made. So it's our first job is to make sure that we produce oil and gas. And NMPC and our partners are responsible for 80% of the production of oil and gas. So there's a process for a relationship between us and our partners. For instance, uh, in the joint venture arrangement, it's a very good opportunity also to explain this. You know, everybody takes his share of his, uh, his production on the basis of your contributions that you're making to this business. And from there, you are expected to pay your taxes, your royalties, and share dividend to your, 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 your shareholders. But you have to take out your cost. It's always the, the truth. Uh, so you have to take out your cost before you see the value that is left for you from the process that are in your, in your hand. So cost of production will look appear very high because it is, that is what keeps the operations going on. That's what makes it possible for everybody else, including our partners, to pay their taxes and royalties. So you see revenue flow coming from three streams. You see the petroleum property tax coming in from the FIRS. You see royalties coming from the Department of Petroleum Resources. And also the, the balance of it comes from the NMPC. For NMPC, for us to continue to keep the operations, we have to pay for the cost of that operation. So when you take out the cost of operation, you are left with some value that would have flown in into the Federation account. Now you have to deal with the issue of petroleum uh, uh, pricing. So you have no other way of doing it because you cannot create that cash. And therefore, you are short of that value in paying into the federation account. That's why when you say, oh, NMPC is going to make load declaration into the federation account, it's actually connected to the cost of our operation, particularly settlement of the cost of petroleum that we are, we are all dealing with. So in real sense, even you say NMPC is zero, not correct because that's not what happened in June. But uh, the values that the federation will expect from us will not be realized as long as we have this structure around the under recovery of the price of petroleum. I didn't so, use the word zero. Apparently, yeah. the word zero was, sought, was said to have come from you, that there will be zero remittance to the federation account. Um, into it, it was a projection. Yes. Uh, we have a responsibility every month to tell the federation account that in the coming three months, uh, this is what we see based on our estimates of all our cost of production, estimate of cost of the petroleum that we have to deliver into the market. So on the basis of that, we say we, it may be zero, but it, turn, it didn't turn out to be zero. Estimates become real when the actual numbers come up. Mm. Yeah. Let me quickly flip this to Lagos. I'm sure there are lots yeah. of issues that they would like to um, bring to your attention. Gentlemen. All right, so if you could tell us, because, I mean, there's been a lot of commentary about the rationale behind uh, the... Uh, NNPC acquiring stake in Dangote Refinery. Could you shed some light on that? Let me start from the, the obvious, which is that Dangote Refinery will come to work. Uh, by 2022, it should come into production. And what that will do is to deliver over 50 million liters of gasoline, in, to be specific, into, the, in our, into our markets. We're also working on that. We have a connection. We're also working on our refineries uh, to make sure that we put the, fix them. We have awarded the contract for Potaco Refinery Rehabilitation. And, and ultimately, we are going to close that of Wari and Kaduna very soon in July so that all of them will work contemporaneously. And at the end of the day, we deliver all of them. The net effect is that you're going to have an environment where Nigeria becomes a hub for petroleum uh, product uh, supply. And it's going to change the 
the dynamics of petroleum supply even in globally in the sense that the flow is coming from Europe today and is going to be reversed to some other direction will be the supplier for West Africa legitimately and also many other parts of the world. So the meaning of this is that there's an opportunity that has thrown at us. And I'm not sure Mr. Damgote wants to sell his uh, equity in the, in the uh, refinery. And I can confirm that it was at our instance that we started this engagement. He did not want to sell these uh, shares in this refinery. I'm sure Nigerians will agree with me that many people have shares in Damgote sugar, Damgote, uh, all kinds of things that he's doing. That if he has thrown, up, thrown it open to the market, and I'm sure Nigerians will rush to buy shares. Having said that, there is no resource dependent country that will watch a business of this scale, which has bordering on energy security, which also has implication of even fiscal security of our country, and you watch it and you ha don't have a say. And for us as a strategy, it just didn't start there. We started this process long before Dangote came on, uh, started his uh, refinery project. We have this, we'll take equity in very significant businesses that are anchored on the oil and gas operations. Fertilizer, methanol plants, you know, small modular, uh, so small condenser refineries, and so many other businesses that we're we are dealing with, so that we can expand our portfolio. But also, because we are the national oil company, we have a responsibility to guarantee energy security for our country. And there's no way you can have that say, except you have a say in the board of this institution. And that's why anyone that is going to construct a refinery that is in the excess of 50,000 barrels per day will talk to them, will take equity in it, as much as we are, going to, we are going to be able to pay for it. And by the way, let me give you a comfort, you know, even for this refinery, Dangote River, we're not going to take government money to buy it. That's the mistake that people are making. They thought that we we're going to take federation money and pay for this refinery. We're going to borrow on the back of the cash flow of this business. We know that this business is viable, it will work, and that it will return dividend. It has a cash flow that is sustainable because refinery business, you know, in the short term, will continue to be sustain sustainable. And that's why banks have come forward to lend to us so that we can take equity in this. So we are not putting anything at stake. And of course, uh, more importantly, what you see in the media today, I'm sure that's, that's why what will interest you, a uh, number of very adverse uh, reports, in, uh, clearly political, some of them, but obviously short of the facts, uh, to, to, to say the least, uh, as, uh, kind of alluding to facts that you know, this was an inappropriate uh, investment. I think we're very proud that we did this. This is good for our shareholders, which includes all the 200 million Nigerians, uh, which will also be happily buying shares from this refinery if they have an opportunity. But now we have done on your behalf, so that ultimately the value will come to all of us. But there's no way you can watch a business of this scale, of this magnitude, of this sensitivity to run without an involvement of the national oil company. No country does this. Well, just one uh, other thing that one we want to ask you. Um, that's Dangote Refinery is private, and I'm pretty sure it's perhaps just as you have said, we want to replicate the same template wherever we have the opportunity. But how about Nigeria's own private, Nigeria's own refineries, the PH Refinery, the Wari Refinery, the Kaduna Refinery? What's the update on them? I understand the governor of Edo State said recently that the Edo Refinery is ready for production uh, as soon as um, signed off by the DPR. So what's the update on those other refineries that Nigeria already has? Yes, first, uh, what we are dealing with is not turnaround maintenance for Potakot. We are dealing with rehabilitation of a refinery. We own up that uh, we haven't done well managing this refinery in the last 20 to 25 years. Uh, our processes didn't help matters. Of course, we don't want to blame, blame the past, but the reality is that we haven't done well managing those refineries. And we are in a situation where you are almost doing an overhaul of a sort. It's no longer a, a turnaround maintenance. That's why we took our time to find out exactly what do we need to do. Uh, we have awarded the EPC contract for Potapa Refinery. Contractor has mobilized to site. We have made substantial progress in this and we will meet our schedules in terms of the Potapa Refinery rehabilitation. And secondly, we have the two other refineries, the Wari and Kaduna. We will award the, ten, uh, the, the EPC contract for Kaduna and Wari within the next two to three weeks, uh, maximum by the end of July, so that these two processes will run, run uh, uh, concurrently, so that at the end of the day, uh, you will have all the refineries working, our own refineries working. And by the way, also, you know, I'm just giving uh, this uh, very critical to, uh, to Nigerians that we are not going to take any government money to, uh, to rehabilitate this refinery. We are borrowing also on the back of the cash flow of these refineries. And this is what is different. Uh, because when you do at the back of the cash flow, it means that you have a system and a process that will enable you to uh, deliver you know, commercially. And that's why we have changed the whole concept. Uh, part of the requirement of the lenders is that we should not operate this refinery. We must have an O&M contractor. It means operation and maintenance contract. So that means practically 
this refinery will be run by the lenders. This is really what it means. And that the cash flow will be able to support the repayment of this loan. The bankers have seen that the cash flow will be able to support this. So ultimately, uh, as the Randwick Refinery Initiative comes up, you know, we're also going to fix our own. We have other initiatives which uh, the governor of Edo State was alluding to. First, we have initiatives around condensate refinery. What it means is that condensates are very light version of uh, crude oil. Let me put it in this uh, basic way. It's much cheaper to convert to petroleum product, and it, typically it comes very light end petroleum products, and, and of course, especially uh, petrol. They are cheaper to construct, quicker to con construct, and also it, it takes out the burden of the open quota restriction that you have. So we have about five initiatives that are going on. We are going to take FID on two of them uh, within the next two to three months. And that means that they will run and ultimately the combined effect of all of them is about 200,000 barrels per day of condensate refining cap capacity. When you add this up, the, our own refineries that are current, the new refinery initiative that we are involved in, and then the Dangote refinery, the ultimately you are going to have a massive production in this country that will will not be able to consume. And that means it puts us in the position of advantage first. It gives us the energy security that we desire and we need. It also allows us to benefit much more from the resources that we have because if you don't add value to petroleum, it's just like uh, buying granite and taking it to the market and you are not ready to convert it to a secondary product. So right. this is what's happening. Uh, mm -hmm. It is almost a, a miracle in our country, but we know that this will be delivered. So uh, if you could just put a figure to it, because as you've referenced, there's, there's been a lot of reports on, on, on various media about just how much that equity is worth. What's the particular figure? And has it been signed and sealed just yet? Not at all. Our, our engagements that we have signed term sheets with the owners of the refinery, I'm not sure Mr. Dangote is very happy with this. Uh, we are taking 20% equity on the Dangote refinery. There's a valuation process. It's very international. This business is very regulated. It's a very international business. No bank will lend money to you to buy equity in any business of this scale if you have not followed the basic valuation process. And that's why what, what you see in the media is no reflection of the realities. Uh, people have not taken their time to ask those questions and to find out exactly how these things are done. We understand this, uh, uh, the politics around some of this. But the, the reality today is that uh, uh, we have a valuation of this refinery about one point. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about 19 billion. I don't have an exact figure, but I think about 19 billion. We haven't closed on this to answer your question straight. There's an ongoing engagement. There's a governance around this that we need to conclude. Uh, that governance includes uh, seeking the authority of the Federal Executive Council to close on this. And what you see in the media is not a reflection of the realities that are on ground. We are not taking 30% equity in the Dangote refinery. You hear all kinds of speculations. There is a hastened uh, process of endorsement of the, the deal itself. It is not true. Actually, we started this conversation well back in December 2020. And, and obviously, uh, it's not what we rush into this. We have taken all our steps, all the international processes for evaluating the what and value of a refinery are taken into place. Our banks are comfortable with it, that they believe that this is the, the actual value and that even when you overvalue, for instance, you know, for the sake of argument that you hear, it's seen thrown up in the, in the media, mm -hmm. that even if you overvalue, the banks will not lend you money because they know that you're not going to recover your cost. So they have no business lending you because your, your repayments are tied to you. You say it's a highly regulated industry. Yeah. The problem in Nigeria is that the NNPC is both regulator and also participator in the market. So it's regulated by who? No, what I mean by regulated, uh, uh, this industry, I didn't mean about petroleum product. NMPC does not regulate anything. We are a business. What I mean by regulated, there are rules that you cannot change in the oil and gas industry. For instance, if you want to buy equity in anything, there's a process that you must follow. If you don't, nobody will, is going to lend to you. So to that extent, your hands are tied. So you cannot say... Oh, by you nobody, you mean nobody in the Nigerian market or nobody... Anywhere, anywhere in the world. That, that's, what, that's how it works. You know that a lot of people have huge questions about NNPC. There Absolutely. have been, you know, questions about how it operates. It was not until only recently that the NNPC yeah. issued its own audited reports. Before yeah. now, it has yeah. not been seen in a very long time. Yeah. Uh, the question a number of people have, because they understand that it's important for the Nigerian government to have stakes in that sort of industry, whether or not, you know, the restructuring that is coming as a result of the PIB, how it's going to influence the relationship between the NNPC and Dangote Refinery, mm -hmm. whether it's will still be allowed to run as a private refinery or, or, or whether the operations of the NNPC will impose inefficiencies on the Dangote refinery. What are your, questions, what are your answers on that? Yes, answer is, is straight. Um, first of all, I think uh, is, is, this is history. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. This is history, Matt. Uh, this company, in its 43 years of operations, it has never published its audited financial statements. 
we did for 2019. We're going to 2018. We've done for 2019. And we'll publish our 2020 audited financial statement. That's, I haven't said that. You know, this is also a matter of obligation. It's, but we are required by law to do this. I don't want to explain why we couldn't do it in the past, but we have done this under the leadership of Mr. Mr. President. We insisted that we must open our books to, to the shareholders of this company. Secondly, this is the only company, I'm, I'm inviting Nigerians to go to the NNPC website, every transaction that we have done, every barrel of crude oil that we have sold on behalf of this country, including the working documents are now published in our website. So mm. anyone can check Well, the question is, is the relationship between mm. the NNPC and Dangote Refinery, how is that yes, going I'm coming, to work? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. We're almost out of time, sir. If you can do it in 30 seconds. It's, it's going to work because in the sense that, you know, uh, it's a karma company. The refinery is going to be a karma company. It means that its books has to be open to all of us and to all its shareholders. And therefore, we don't have any problem. We have, we'll have a stake in this refinery. We'll be part of the management of that company in the sense that we'll be sitting on the board. And, and ultimately, the value will come back to Nigeria. So. Now, looking at the fact that the, that oil is priced in dollars, and you hope to be given crude to the to the Dangote refinery, how is that going to affect the pricing of petroleum products here in Nigeria ultimately? Petroleum is priced in naira in our country. You buy crude oil in U.S. dollars, so it's, it is really a ba banking transaction uh, between customers. Therefore, when you want to buy crude oil from, from us, you buy the U.S. dollars. The central bank is there to resolve all those issues around banking. The banking industry, I'm not sure there's really any complication. If Nigeria will not pay for product in, Naira, in, in dollar. Of course, it will be in Naira, but that is the duty of uh, the banking institutions to, to combat those values into U.S. dollars. I think for a number of Nigerians, what they would really like to see is a little more clarity in terms of the relationship and how it will ultimately benefit Nigerians because the, the quarrel and the crisis has always been that Nigeria produces crude oil and as such should not be paying so much uh, for landing cost of petrol when the product is actually produced right here in the country. The first thing it does for you, to, it takes up the cost of freight, which is amounts the average of about 21 naira to the liter. That's the first benefit Nigerians will have. Even if, uh, today, for instance, the product that we're bringing in, they are imported, that's why it's priced at around 256 if you are selling the market. If you are to take it from any of our refineries today and they are functioning, you would have taken out 21 naira straight from it. That's the first level of... Uh, uh, of, of, of value that will come to Nigeria. The second value is proximity to supply. Because today, when you buy a petroleum product in Europe, it takes at least 14 days to arrive to this country. Here, it's, it's sitting on your soil. Within one day, it can reach from Lagos into Maiduguri or into Sokoto. So that's, that's, the, that's the difference. So in terms of security and in terms of value, Nigerians will benefit from it. But ultimately, the third level of benefit is that there will be dividend from this business. I know that we'll recover our costs. We'll make money from this, and those value will be returned back to Nigerians. Mr. Melikieri, we, we will hope that when the PIB is passed, as has already been considered in the National Assembly, we'll be able to have you back here uh, to you know, shed a little more light on this and a number of other issues concerning our petroleum sector. But thank you so much for coming and thank you so much. on Sunrise Edit this morning. Mm -hmm. Melikieri is a Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and is speaking to us here in our Buja studio. Sadly, we won't be able to take your mails today, even though we have lots of them. Hopefully, we'll be able to do so tomorrow. Thank you for watching this morning. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. I'm Kaede Okikiolo. Have a wonderful day. I'm Ayo Makinde. I'm Chamberlain Osa. We'll see you next time.